Okay, I'm out here at First Energy Stadium in Reading, speaking with Philippe Amont. Philippe, a lot of early success in 2011 for you. Just talk about your hot start this season. Um, you know, uh, it's just, uh, I think it just came from the off season. <clears throat> you know, working out and uh, just getting the mind right set. You know, forgetting about a little bit about you know last year and I guess just taking the positive from last year and just bringing it into and you know eliminate the negatives and and whatever happened and you know especially making the transition to you know bullpen guy which. This is what I wanted to do after the season. I uh, think made it made it easier. Now that's obviously a more comfortable role for you. And uh, you know, is that is that something that helps you uh, on the physical side or the mental side more? Do you think? I think both. I mean, uh, I think I, I think I have the you know the physical you know abilities to you know be in the bullpen and and then and to bring you know bring a lot of a lot of stuff to the game and and you know I'm intense you know mentally you know I'm really aggressive when I'm on the mound. You know, I, you know, I want to get people out, I want to go, you know, strike those guys out, and then I come in, you know, and there's guys on base, you know, and I'm, you know, i got to get out of that inning, so, you know, it's the type of pressure that I like to be, and I like to, you know, be in, so. I just spoke with uh, New Hampshire Fisher Cats outfielder Darren, Darren Mastroianni, and uh, he's new back to the league, I don't think he saw you in, in, in the Eastern League last year, and he described you as an imposing figure and was impressed by you the other night uh, in your outing. Is that something you could, you take as a compliment as a, as a fierce competitor? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know, a guy like that, you know, you know, I know a little bit about Maestriani. You know, I, I faced him a couple times last year, but, okay. I mean, it was not, you know, it was just a you know, starter, a little bit in a different game, but, um, you know, for him to, you know, to, to see that, you know, the type of composure, you know, I have on the mound, obviously, you know, it tells me that, you know, I'm doing the right thing, and, 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 and this is what I want to be, so. What's your pitch repertoire like right now, and, uh, you know, have you made any additions or adjustments uh, since you've been in the Philly system? No, it's all been, it's all been the same. Um, still have that forcing fastball, that sinker, uh, yeah, that split, and that curveball, so it's been the same uh, since I got in. Of that menu, what do you consider your, your go-to pitch or, or your out pitch? Um... I mean, it just depends on the situation. If I want to get strike, I'll usually I'll leave it. I'll probably throw a curveball. Um, this is, you know, where I'll get most of my my strikeouts on the curveball. But, you know, lately it's been, you know, spit you know, pretty effective. And, you know, fastball, you know, whatever I command, so. A lot of solid and well-regarded prospects on the AA Reading Phillies team this year, yourself included. What's what's the best thing about uh, this clubhouse and this roster right now? You know, it's, I mean, everybody's, I think everybody's on the same page. Um, you know, everybody, you know, deserved to be here, and, and, and they all think that, you know, they should be here, and, and it makes it easier. You know, sometimes, you know, when you get older guys, whatever, and they, you know, they start getting bitter a little bit, you know, they, they don't belong here, they belong somewhere else, you know, it makes it a little harder, especially, you know, on the, on, on the rest of the team. But this year, you know, we have a, a pretty good squad. I mean, everybody gets along, and, you know, we're having fun, and you know, I think I think everything that's in the clubhouse is taken out on the field, and you know, we're, we've been having some good success. You joined the Phillies, um, <clears throat> excuse me. You joined the Phillies as part of the piece of the puzzle, uh, the group of prospects that came over in the Cliff Lee trade from Seattle uh, back in '09, and uh, there was a lot of high expectations as, as far as the, the the group of you guys that came over. Um, how do you feel about that, and, and do you think anything's changed as far as those expectations since Cliff Lee's back in the Phillies organization? No, I think, you know, Cliff Lee's back, and, you know, at the beginning I was, you know, pulling around, I was like, well, I guess we're, they don't need us anymore, but, you know, they're just, you know, just to pull around with you guys, but I, I don't know, I, I think it's just, you know, it's a plus for them, you know, they got Cliff Lee back, and plus, you know, they got the three guys that got in the trade, um, obviously, maybe, you know, it's not, the pressure, you know, the pressure was there last year, um, it's not there anymore this year. I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, I've adjusted to, you know, the organization, everybody, and, and I know everybody would, you know, they think about, you know, all three of us, and, and you know, I'll just go up, you know, about my base. I don't worry about, you know, getting moved up or getting moved down and, and get called up to the big leagues, and I want to make the big leagues right now, and this is all the stuff that I can't control, and I got to, you know, the only thing I can control is on the field. And that's what I got to concentrate on. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about the rest. So, do you recall at all what your first exposure to baseball was, and did you always want to pursue baseball as a career? No, no. Um, first, I mean, remember the first time you know was 
was 13, 14 years old, and I just playing with my friends, you know, I just, it was just a summer league, and just to have fun, and one of my best friends was playing, and I just decided, you know, to start playing with them, and, and I actually made, you know, one of the best teams, because I had a good arm, and then I could catch ball, I played center field, and I could hit, and then, uh, I guess I just moved on from there, and then every year, you know, I start getting better, and, you know, making better teams, and higher levels, and, and, you know, I ended up playing on the national team for Canada, on the juniors, and I think it, it all started from there. You know, scouts come to the games and, and start talking about, you know, getting drafted, and they didn't know, they didn't know where, and, you know, and I, I guess I just kept working hard, and, you know, after that I figured out, you know, I, I can do something with that, and I love playing the, the game, so. We talked about you, uh, your physical stature, you being an opposing figure to uh, to, to, batter, uh, to batters. Uh, were you always on the bigger side? You, you told me about, I mean, I would think 13, 14 years old to start playing is kind of a late start. A lot, a lot of kids play younger than that. Uh, were you always on the big side as far as your group of friends that you, that you started playing with? Um, yeah, yeah, right about that age, you know, I started to, to get a lot bigger than everybody else. Um, I took, I think... 13, that was about six foot one, and then I hit 14, and I was six foot four. So I mean, I, I I really took you know a big step you know from everybody else, and and uh, uh, I think it made it made it easier for me. You know, I guess people you know start seeing you know the the, the, the size that I had, and then they gave me opportunities a little bit everywhere. And uh, you know, if somebody gives me an opportunity, I won't miss it. So. So we're talking about you developing into a fan of the game uh, by virtue of playing with your friends. Who were some players that you, you were a fan of or looked up to, uh, major league guys, uh, in your youth? Mark Parrott. Oh. No. <laughs> Mark Parrott, of course, your manager walking by. So besides Mark Parrott, what major leaguers uh, m maybe did you look you up to? It, it was, you know, mostly, you know, like the, everybody, you know, everybody else, you know, the big guys, and Barry Bonds, and, you know, I always wear number 25. Uh, so Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire, um, I like Randy Johnson, uh, uh, big fan of Randy Johnson, uh, Pedro Martinez, and all those guys. So, I mean, you know, growing up, especially, you know, start, you know, being a pitcher, uh, really started looking at Randy Johnson. You know, he was tall, and I was taller than everybody. Like he had that low three quarter, and I was always, you know, low three quarter growing up. So it was always something that I looked up to, and, and you know, as a hitter. You know, lefty, Barry Bonds is a lefty, I was number 25, he was number 25, so in my head I was Barry Bonds when I was a kid, so. All right, and last thing before I let you go, thank you for taking the time. Uh, let's talk about teenage kids, you, you, yourself as you got into the sport. I, I've coached Babe Ruth League age kids, age 13 to 15, and, uh, you know, if you had the opportunity to speak to kids that age that were hoping to play baseball beyond high school, whether it's professionally or in college, what advice might you give to kids that age? You know, um... You know, you. I think at that age, you know, you you don't really know what you're gonna do. But um, I think you know, if you really want to do, if you really want to play baseball, you know, you just gotta dedicate yourself to uh, being a you know baseball player. Um, and you know, you just gotta make you know sacrifices. Um, especially growing up, you gotta make sacrifices and, and take the you know good choices. You know, instead of going the wrong direction. Um, to be, you know, the best you can be. Walk tall.